Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I am so excited for today's video because we are trying out a whole bunch of new makeup. We have stuff from Pat McGrath Labs, Kylie Cosmetics, Natasha Denona. We go in and try out all the new products. I tell you what I'm thinking about them. I swatch some things. But you guys, before we jump into it, if you're new here, make sure to hit the subscribe button down below. Hit the bell for notifications of new videos. And if you like this video, make sure to big thumbs up. But if you want to see how I got this look trying out a bunch of new products, just keep watching. Okay, you guys, we have some new things that have been released that I picked up and I just want to try out, play around with, and see what it's all about. The first thing that I have, this is Pat McGrath Labs, and she just released her, like, Valentine's release. This is the Love Palette. Daring, it's in Daring Desire. So... I've heard lots of things about this on TikTok and YouTube. It is like a cardboard packaging. It's not the normal like hefty solid black that she has, which is pretty like thick and there's some weight to it, which we're used to for her quads. But this is one of the little cardboard palettes and this is the color story. You have three shimmers and then one matte shade, which is a brown. I'm okay with that. My only concern is there's not a lighter shade, and I tend to go for a light shade in the crease and the outer corner and then deepen it up. So I'm gonna see what I can do as far as this brown shade is concerned, but let me, let me swatch them real quick. Ooh, they do feel really nice. And I've seen some like swatches on Instagram and TikTok and YouTube. All right, so those are the shades. Let's go ahead and swatch them right here. Nothing full-blown and crazy because it's only four shades. Ooh, I really like these shimmers. They are very beautiful. Probably going to lean towards this purpley shade. Maybe I can put the pink in there. And then this in the inner corner and the brow bone. We'll see. Y'all, I, I found this shirt at Target yesterday. I just dropped... Dixon off to get groomed. That little, <laughs> he's a furball. Um, when we went to Michigan, we didn't get him groomed prior because we're like, it, it might snow, it might be a little cold. I don't want to like have him shaved like he normally is because he might get cold. And we have sweaters for him, but it was actually a little bit warmer in Michigan than we expected. So yesterday, I finally got a chance. I wasn't at work some crazy hours. And when I called the schedule thinking it was going to be like today or tomorrow, today's Saturday, they're like, Oh no, we've got an opening at four. So I was able to take him in and get him groomed. So he looks like a little dapper gentleman right now, but I, I ran over and <laughs> I went to target while I was waiting and I saw it. I was like, Oh, that's so cute. And I like the saying it's like the way I see it. If it, the way I see it, if you want the rainbow, you got to put up with the rain. Sorry, I was reading it backwards, which <laughs> I guess I could have just looked at my monitor because it, it's the right way on there. I am actually trained. We have, we call them status boards. They're clear acrylic. If you've watched any like military videos where they're inside like some of the places that have those, we're supposed to be able to read or write backwards. I can read backwards. I can't necessarily write backwards. Not anymore. But that's what we did back in the day before we had like computer screens and digital displays. Uh, so that took a second for me to read it backwards. <laughs> Anyways. All right. Let me go ahead and prime my eyes. I'm just using my P. Louise base. Okay. Diving into the quad. And this one. So on other palettes, she doesn't have like shade names on the back of them. This one does. We're going to go into Daring Desire. I'm going to use a fluffy crease brush, crease brush to start out, put it into the crease, the outer V just with the fluffy brush. It'll kind of disperse it and give us kind of a like smoked out look before I use my compacted uh, smudger to deepen it up in certain areas. It's still, it's still kind of dark for being on a fluffy crease brush. Ooh. 
I also took it kind of high. All right, it is dispersed out a little bit. I'm gonna see what we can do as far as like building it when I go in with the compacted smudger. Not too bad. This, <laughs> where my blue vein is, it seems to like have caught and it doesn't wanna blend out. You guys, Luke got home this morning. His ship came back yesterday but he had duty so he got home this morning around like 8 30 and brought me coffee and we i i have been running a little bit slow only because i was doing some laundry and work stuff and just now it's like 2 30 in the afternoon we have some things we need to do but it's nothing like pressing all right now switching to my compacted smudge brush I'm placing it where I want it first before I like blend it out but you can see the difference between placing it with the compacted smudger and then the blended uh, crease brush so it just depends on what you're trying to do with your makeup you can actually make a very dimensional look just based off the brushes you use this is one shape it's the same one but two different brushes stupid crease I always get. I say don't get old, but like that's not gonna happen. Skin's just gonna do what it does. It's just a matter of what you do to take care of it and preserve it. I actually really like this. This brown shade is very dimensional when you're changing up your brushes. But I think we got some good depth and some shading. I'm gonna go into the shade Amethyst Noir. This one I'm going to pick up on my ring finger. My middle finger, not my ring finger. It is so beautiful. I do love her shimmers. This is just gonna go in the middle. That is so luscious. Let me know, are you picking up this palette? Do you not want it? Like, what are your thoughts on this collection? Now going into the shade Star Garnet. This one I'm gonna pick up on my ring finger. I'm gonna put it just in the inner corner. What do you guys think? Do you like it? Would you have done something different? I am going to use my dry brush and pick up Star Garnet and put it into the crease a little bit. With a dry brush, it doesn't seem to want to go up at all it just prefers to be applied with a finger all right i'm gonna do this eye prime my face i'll be back because i have the new foundation and concealer from kylie okay you guys i primed my face already i used the nyx plump right back i'm almost out of this i probably I might repurchase it i really really like this especially in the winter and then my tar time less smoothing i wanted to use something i know i like um also when i go to use my powder i have the one size which is the translucent um because like i said i have the kylie cosmetics power plush longwear foundation i have mine in shade 4n and then the recommended concealer is the 4WN, and this is the Power Plush Longwear Concealer. So, longwear foundation that seamlessly blends into skin, providing medium buildable coverage with an airbrushed satin finish. Okay, let's see. And then for concealer, it says a buildable concealer that instantly brightens, blurs, and smooths to a, to a natural satin finish. We'll see. If you've been here before, I have lines underneath my eyes. They don't go away, but I can hopefully with makeup and other skincare products kind of help them out and like see if I can make them disappear as much as possible. So I'm interested to see how on my 39 year old skin this ends up looking. All right, so I'm just going to apply it directly onto my brush. We'll do one side first. I don't know that I need all of that. 
That might be more than I needed, actually. A little goes a long way. Be really careful. I said one side, I'm going to end up having to do both sides. Because this concealer, or this foundation, is it's going pretty far. It was like a pump and a half. Because the first pump never counts as like a full pump. I don't know that the shade match is perfect. But we'll see how it looks once I like set it and use contour and bronzer and all that stuff. <laughs> that clicking noise, if you hear it, is my bracelets. <laughs> It's actually not bad at all. The color match, it does have like a yellow undertone for being a neutral. It's supposed to be a neutral undertone. It looks a little more yellow than I would gravitate towards. But when I'm looking at like all the redness in my skin that it just kind of like may disappear. Hmm. Have you guys tried this out? Are you planning on picking it up? This is the first foundation she's released. I don't remember her having foundation in her line but I know that her eyeshadow palettes blushes highlighters all that had gotten reformulated what now almost two years ago now that was just like one it wasn't even a full pump it was like a half a pump so don't go too like heavy on the foundation you're just gonna have a lot like you saw what happened with a pump and a half that was just way more than I needed. Like it says, medium to buildable. So heed my warning and let it build. take my dampened sponge and see what I can do as far as like absorbing any excess especially on my right side not too bad let's see I do like the packaging the light pink and then just the matte finish on the bottle is really nice it's kind of like a satiny finish now we have the concealer and the one size powder. Actually, I did pull out a cream contour, so I think I'm gonna use that first. So I just have my Milk Makeup Contour Stick, Sculpt Stick. I'm gonna work on one side to see. I also don't know how quickly this dries down. All right, and it's just got a little triangle like doe foot. I think that should just be enough. So just trying to get out. She was not a fan of having Dixon upstairs earlier, but Luke came up so he could take a shower and get ready. And she came in here and hung out and now she's trying to get out. That is not too bad, actually. I'm interested to see what it looks like once I set it, though. It is a nice, creamy consistency. It looks like it's like, even with my Tarte Timeless on, it looks like it's just, it's not going into my pores like I had with the Physician's Formula 
was it the BB cream? That one went into my pores even with the Tarte Timeless and I was just like, Phew. doesn't look horrible. The true test is once it's set. So I am going to pat it with my finger and see like if it sets or like smooths it out a little bit. It's not horrible, but it's not my favorite. <laughs> the concealer's not like, I don't know. I still love the Natasha Denona High Glam. Like that, when I'm talking about concealers, is like the concealer I am comparing everything else to right now because it just looks so good under my eyes. Yeah, my under eyes look like I'm 60 years old. Cool, let's set the rest of the face. And I have been using the one size powder for work and have been really liking it. I forget about it all the time, but I love it. That and Huda Beauty. And that's usually what I use when I do my foundation reviews. All right, so it has sink into my lines on my forehead, which not my favorite. Let's smooth those out and see if we can fix it. Just can't show emotion until you set your forehead. It's better. It's not... Like, I can still see the lines right here in that mirror. Like, why are these more intense? The foundation's not horrible. The concealer, I'm not really a fan of right now. We'll see how it wears what it looks like once it's set and everything else is on so far. And then I'll also like, when I go to work and stuff, I'll try the foundation with other concealers and see. Um, I just know I have a couple other like things to try. I picked up the Fenty concealer and I really wanted to try that today, but I was like, no, let me try the Kylie one. I'm gonna try Fenty tomorrow. All right, let's go ahead and finish off this eye look and move on to other things. Going into Daring Desire. This is just going to be on my small, tiny, compacted smudger to place it underneath. I'm going to grab my fluffy crease brush and I don't normally use it under the eye, but I kind of want to like blend it out a little bit more. It is more concentrated with that compacted smudger. Much better. All right, and then switching over to my larger compacted smudger. All right, now for the inner corner. We're going to use the shade Galactic Glow for the inner corner. And I just have my little pencil brush. I think we're also going to use it on the brow bone. This palette is literally a shimmer palette with a matte. I'm not mad at it because I love, I love shimmers. But not everyone is like that. Not everyone feels that way. Let me know, are you picking up this palette or are you just like, nah, not me, not my cup of tea. It's pretty, there's like a little bit of a sheen, nothing too intense or crazy. Okay, you guys, before I go ahead and do blush, I have the Bronze Cheek Face Glow Palette from Natasha Denona. Um, I do have an affiliate code for Natasha Denona. It's Ashley Lorraine. It's also in the drop down if you ever want to save some money. Um, all right, so there are two creams. This says it's a Bounce Cream Blush right here and then Bounce Cream Glow. But these two are supposed to be, oh, this, 
as a highlight as well. But I have a highlighter from Pat McGrath, so I want to use that. But I want to try this Super Glow Bronze. I wonder, like, let's swatch it because it looks like I might need to put something underneath it. Yeah. Let me grab a bronzer. And just on top, I have one from Pat McGrath. So let's let's stick with the trend today. This is the Bronze Nirvana. Divine Bronzer and Bronze Nirvana. So let's place this down and then we'll use the glow. I will say the color of the foundation with setting powder did tone down and is not as yellow as it was when I put it on. All right, you guys, I just grabbed a brush that's a little bit smaller because like, <laughs> this is my normal bronzer and I'm just kind of like, mm, I don't know that I need all that for this little glow shade. So super glow bronze, this makes me nervous. I don't usually do like a glowy for <laughs> Just because growing up, like I had some horrible nicknames because of my forehead. Windshield and five head. I've come to terms with it, but when I was a teenager, not so much. If you want like a glowy, like bronze thing going on, it's a pretty shade. You definitely need to put something down. It's not horrible. Uh, solar panel will definitely be my like <laughs> nickname today. And just a little bit of a sheen. I am gonna swatch these two. So this is the bounce cream glow and the bounce cream blush those are quite beautiful and then this super glow nude highlighter oh, those are quite stunning those will be beautiful in the summer okay i picked it up on a whim i had seen it when it first released and i was like mm, i don't know that i need that but that is quite beautiful and would just be like as glowy highlighters if I didn't already have a highlighter to try out. So blush. So the one thing recently is when I have been ordering from Pat McGrath's website, I've been getting free things. And one of them is the blush. I got the Skin Fetish Divine Blush in Cherish. This was sent to me for free. Wasn't expecting it. It was just like free gift with purchase. And I was like, those are not cheap at all. So I was able, like I purchased the eyeshadow palette, the highlighter, and one of the two lipsticks. Uh, the other lipstick looked a little more on like the yellowy nude side. And I was like, mm, this is not my vibe today. But this is the shade. And it is quite stunning. I double checked to make sure. I have one, but it's, this shade is flirtatious. And it's a little more on like the brown, like tannish, tannish side. So I was looking at this, I'm like, do I need to keep both? But they're different shades and I have definitely been gravitating towards like some more pinky shades. There is some kick up in the pan, but I'm okay with it. Means we're gonna get some pigment, like, all right. I like pushing it into my temple, just like a wash of color up there. Do I need blush all over my face, all over my cheeks? Yes, I do. I, I actually quite like having my, like a lot of blush recently. It's weird, because I didn't used to. I just like 
a peachy shade that kind of blended in and just had like a wash of color. And now I'm like, give me all the vibrant shades. <laughs> it is really pretty. Not a big deal. Got some pig pigmented payoff, which I really enjoy. All right, there was a highlighter released. This is in the shade Illumineer Nude Opal. Oh, <laughs> the shade is Nude Opal. It is the Sublime Skin Highlighter. And I double checked to make sure before I purchased this because I do have one shade and it came out in the Bridgerton collection. This is different. It's more pinky. The other one's a little more like silvery gold. I'm, I love the pressings in Pat McGrath, like, uh, highlighters. Couldn't speak for a minute. So beautiful. Let's do the other side before I forget that I have another cheek because <laughs> I could go in on this highlighter. It is so beautiful. definitely buildable. If you want it beaming, just build it a little bit. All right, I do not have anything new for brows, liner. I do have a new mascara and lips, so I'll be back for that. Okay, you guys, so usually I put black in the waterline and tightline that way. But there have been a lot of people asking me to not put liner on, which did not happen. I still put a nude liner on. I didn't realize that I had it. So these drawers have some of my like black coal liners, my liquid liners, colorful liners. And I just happened to have one of the little like trial size Pixie by Petra in like a nude. This one is matte nude. So I was like, okay, let me try it out. You guys, there's been a couple of you guys that have asked for me to not put black in the waterline. And I was like, all right, let me know. Like, what do you guys think? For me, it's weird because with having black in the waterline on top, it kind of, like right now there looks, it looks like a gap. I kind of want black in the upper waterline. Let me know your thoughts. I do have the Pat McGrath Labs Dark Star Mascara. This was also sent with the shadow palettes. I think this is when I purchased the Star Wars palette. I still have not used that or tried it out. Um, it did come out a couple months ago, but it was on sale and I was like, ooh, let me pick that up. So they sent that with, or they sent this with that palette. I really wanna try it. So that is what this, that is one massive spoolie I don't know what it's supposed to do. It didn't say on the box if it's supposed to be like volumizing, lengthening. With bristles like this, <laughs> it can do everything. Wow, that did a lot for my lashes. And you can see them better today because I really kept the liquid liner super tight on the eyelid. I'm getting better about that, you guys. <laughs> um, it does take some time though, and I have to pull my mirror that's directly underneath the camera so close to my face to get it super tight. You guys, the, the doll eyes, that's what they look like to me. It's so weird. I don't know, like, what do you guys think? All right, so this is one coat. Let me go ahead and do a second coat. One of my favorite mascaras from Pat McGrath is the Fetish Eyes. That is gorgeous. Never purchased it. It was sent in a subscription box, but 
that mascara is one of my favorites from her. I also, like, hmm, I probably need to repurchase it. Oh, that looks so good. I really like this mascara. Alright, mascara, no mascara. That is a huge difference. Also, I know, my lashes are non-existent until they have mascara on them. My grandmother, if she did nothing else, would do her brows and her mascara. She was not, like, heavy into makeup, um, but even, like, 82 years old, we're going to the doctor and she's like, let me do something real quick. And she would do her brows with the Revlon red brow pencil and just like smudge it in really quick. And then her mascara. There was one time that my cousin was like, you should let Ashley do you guys. With the cold, it seems like my nose just stays running. I'm not sick. I haven't been sick. I, I take my vitamins daily, but <laughs> all right. The good thing is that just tested like the durability of my foundation. It didn't seem to like budge. All right, second coat on this eye. I really like that. And I'm wondering, like, is Dark Star Mascara? Because I know I need to buy a new Pat McGrath fetish eyes. I think I still have. Do I still have this one? I probably need to get rid of this. Nope, it's a different brush. Yeah, I need to replace this. When I did my declutter series, I didn't do mascaras. All right, let's do some setting spray. This is, of course, the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Setting Spray. This is one of my favorites. And I always do it between my mascara and my lips. When I used to do it last, after I did my lips, I swear I couldn't get on, like, this area. I want to, like, press in those little, like, dots, but then my, my lipstick would just move. All right, I have two lipsticks. One was released in the Valentine's Day collection, which is McMenemy, McMenemy, McMenemy. I know it's part of it because it's got the little heart. This one's also, oh no, that's not the right shade. I was wrong. Well, I have McMenemy. I think I picked this up when I bought the Star Wars palettes and I really wanted it, the matte trance. It's kind of like a purpley shade. Look at that gorgeous like I say purple it looks purple but that is a luscious gorgeous burgundy-esque red this is what I would have expected in the Valentine's collection that and like a nude but this is the darker of the two shades and this is the shade nude nocturne it does have a design on it but this had a better hue than the other one, which kind of looked to me when swatched, like it had more of like a tan yellow nude. And that's, I just don't gravitate towards them. I literally decluttered all of those out of my lip collection. And I want to use this shade. I really do. Ugh, you guys, it does not want to come off with a makeup wipe. Come on now. So looking at this, I'm thinking my Makeup Forever Wherever Walnut. Huh? It's close. That'll work. Alright, so let's go ahead and line the lips real quick. completely blocking. It 
when you guys see me pointing at like whatever side when I'm looking in the monitor, the like being backwards, I just talked about like being able to read backwards, but I always want to make sure that I'm looking at like the right. This shade though with like a lighter or just a lip gloss on it, it's probably going to be like one of my spring shades because that's coming back into sh style right now. Like, what was it? The 90s? Early 2000s when we were doing that? Where you would line your lips and leave nothing in there and then put gloss on and you just had liner lips? Was that 2000s or was that concealer lips? I'm really bad with my trends. I was not into makeup like I am now back then. And it's a little bit darker. Okay, I had to go and toss all my hair and take it out of its clips um, because I do have one more thing that was sent to me with my order from Pat McGrath Labs and this is the clear vinyl gloss. And I don't normally do gloss when I have my hair down, but at the same time, I really want to try it and you know, sometimes if I'm lucky, like right now there doesn't seem to be any wind. <sighs> I can see the trees at my neighbor's house and they're not swaying so it maybe there's no wind that will knock my hair into my lips and just like smear the gloss everywhere which is why I don't do gloss when my hair is down. I really want to try it because it looks gorgeous. The one thing I will say, the nice thing about this type of gloss is that I can easily just go and like wipe it off. And yes, it's like in the tube a little bit, but you clear that out by just pushing it through. Oh, that is gorgeous. Look at it. Mm -hmm. Cause the other thing is like, if you have a regular gloss that has a doe foot applicator, you're just putting that color back into the container and it changes the lip gloss. This like I can clean off the tip of it and it's fine and look how glossy the lips are. Mm. That is so beautiful. I like the red under hue. I don't tend to gravitate towards like brown shades but the red in it I really like that. And then with the gloss it's not defining all the lines I have in my lips. I like that. I really like that. <laughs> okay, you guys, this is the final look. I'm liking the eyeshadows. The quad though, like, I forgot what was it? I think it was Angelica Nyquist. She was talking about the packaging of this, how you've got the red and the blue and she would have liked to see that on the inside. I can appreciate that. This, like, there's only one matte shade, the rest are shimmers. I think I got a really pretty look. The red with the purple is kind of, I don't know that it's my favorite. I could have just done the red with the browns. I could have done just a purple with the brown. That's fine. It's cute, I'm glad I picked it up. I'll probably try like playing around with it a little bit more, see what my favorite shades are. But I can understand why she's like, the packaging is deceiving. It 100% is like, it, it's pretty. When I saw this packaging, I had no idea what to expect on the inside. But I do like the color story that's in here. The shades are pretty. I think if I used like an eyeshadow primer underneath this shade when I placed it, it, it looks kind of muted down now. I don't know. Let me know your thoughts on this. You guys, are you picking up the collection? Are you passing on it? Do you like the color story? It's not for everyone. Uh, the lipsticks are really pretty. I love the gloss. The highlighter is beautiful. I like the blush that was sent to me for free. And then the foundation and concealer. Mm, okay. Foundation right now in the mirror, looking at it, it looks really nice. I'm still not a fan of my lines and I use my Tarte Timeless. So I don't know if it's like maybe a different primer or whatever. It didn't... I don't know. I also want to try it with a different powder. Like, I don't know that I like how it looks sitting on my skin. 
Like when I think about, and I have a little like, something was like flaking down here. When I think about the other foundations that I have in my collection, like the NARS Light Reflecting, the Givenchy Prism Lyre, like I really like some of those. I don't know that I'm in love with this foundation. I'll try it with my Huda Beauty setting powder. I don't know that it's the setting powder because I've used my Light Reflecting and my Gorlon, no, Gorlon, Givenchy with the one size just this week for work. And I really liked how my makeup looked throughout the day. I liked how it looked when I went to bed to like take my makeup off. I don't know that I'm a huge fan of this. Has anyone else tried the foundation? And what's your skin type? Uh, do you tend to use medium to buildable coverage foundations? It's kind of leaning on the matte side. This is why I said recently that I've gotten rid of a lot of my matte foundations. If it's not like a natural or luminous type of thing, I'm not using it because it just seems to show all of my aging. And I don't want that. Like there's foundations out there that when you put them on and they just kind of conceal and then you put a setting powder on top and it just, it looks like your skin, but a little bit better and less, like less flawed. That's amazing. I absolutely love that. This, I don't know you guys, let me know your thoughts. And even like my under eyes, they're not my favorite. I'm not a huge fan, but I can tell you that I have other concealers in my collection. I even just repicked up the the Maybelline Age Rewind. I just repicked this up. Still love this concealer. I had to pick up a new one because the one I had previously was too light. I decluttered it because it wasn't the right shade. I repicked it up in a better shade for my skin tone when I have a tan. I, I, I think I would still like this over the Kylie. And this is more affordable than Kylie. I don't know, you guys. Let me know your thoughts. Have you picked it up? Have you tried it out? Are you going to? And I'm just, I'm interested to know because I personally, and I buy everything hoping that I'm going to love it. And I don't know that I'm in love with it. I'll try it out with a different powder. I'll try it out with different primer. Sometimes that can affect how it performs. Mm -hmm. Right now, I'm not so sure. By the time this gets posted, I'll have more thoughts and I'll put them in the description box down below. But you guys, that is it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you're new here, make sure to hit the subscribe button down below. Hit the bell for notifications of new videos. If you like this video, make sure you give it a big thumbs up. I really appreciate it. And until my next video, you guys, bye. And I'll see you in the next one.